welcome back for another Tuesday Talk. This week's Tuesday Talk is going to be all about this fabulous product that I bought from Teachers Pay Teachers. <laughs> it sounds like a crazy thing to talk about, but I'm loving it and I feel like you guys will like it too. It was a tad bit expensive. Each unit is $15, so pretty much you guys might only need to buy one unit. I have some higher readers, so I actually needed two units, possibly three, and then it's like 45, and then I was like, forget that, I'm just gonna buy the whole bundle. So I ended up spending $60 on it, and it's worth every penny. I feel like it has helped me with my guided reading groups, and it differentiates for them, and it already has your supplies ready for you, and it's Science of Reading, which is a great resource. So I am going to link it down below, but here is a picture of what it looks like. I'm gonna start with unit one to give you a brief overview of what that is and then show you how I've been using it. And then I will go into how I'm using unit two as well and the assessment. And then I'll also show you some of the cute resources that it came with. Okay, so the unit comes with this sheet that gives all the letters and you can actually click on the little print and it'll print all the resources for that letter, there's like 10 pages per letter. The letter order that Science of Reading goes through is pretty similar to our curriculum, but it's not exact, so I'm just taking the letters that our order is, but using their resources. Once I bought this product, we were already on letter P, so I had to skip A and M and S, but we started with P. So I'm organizing it in like a Ziploc bag, and I'm printing out the lesson plan, and then I'm putting in some of the resources and the little books, okay? So this is the lesson plan sheet. As you can see, it has like a ton of information. You're not gonna be able to read it, so I'm just gonna give you some ideas of what it has. So this is for my two middle groups. This is what I'm doing for them. For my lower group, I'm gonna do something totally different that's more like working on their IEP, which I've told you in every single video. But this is for my two middle groups that are like learning letters. That's what they need, you know? Okay, so. On the first rotation, I do the first chunk because this is like a lesson plan for all in one, but we can't get it all done in one time. So that would be my recommendation. I break it into two. We start with phonemic awareness, which this is letter P. So the first thing that it has on here is saying a sentence and the sentence is Paul, pet, Pete's pet. Then it says that they have to repeat the sentence. Then it says you count the words in the sentence. And then it says, what's, ask the students what sound they hear repeated at the beginning of the word. So that is like a two minute activity, but it just gets them saying those words, counting the words in a sentence, and then obviously getting them ready for the sound that they hear. Then one of the resources that it comes with is your like sound valley cards, but I'm not making a sound valley in here because that's more, you know, later on, that's okay. But it does show them the mouth that they need to make the sound. So we get our mouth ready and I show it to them and we practice making the sound because that's the second part. So it says letter lesson. It says today we're gonna learn about the sound P. Can you repeat the sound P, P, P. When I say P, I press my lips together. I model it, so the students like, it has all this written for you, so you could literally read it. Then, after that, we talk about how we spell the letter P, like how we write it, basically. And it has these cute cards with little songs, too. So I take my finger and I read it straight down, bump around, and then I gave it to each kid to do it. We just rotated through. Straight down, bump around. Then we did the lowercase p, and I'm talking about that. This is the uppercase, this is the lowercase. They kind of look the same. What is different about them? A tail straight down, because they're learning that it goes below the line, bump around, and then they all traced it. So then, after we talk about what, how to make the sound, how to write the letter, then they have this really cute resource where it's like emotion as you're making the sound. So we know it's p, and we tell them that the p sound sounds like a penguin patting its feet. So the motion is waddling like a penguin and you say p, 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 p. And that is amazing because a lot of kids are kinesthetic and if you put a motion with it, they learn it. That's how we do our poems. We put motions with it and then they learn the poem because the motions help them. So p, 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 p. And then, still part of that, so this is kind of like maybe five minutes of the learning, so like a two minute, then a five minute. We, I give words, so like pan, and they have to give a thumbs up if they think they hear the p sound. Pizza, um, what's the other word? Mail, thumbs down, you know? So quick little handsy activity, no pictures involved, they're just listening. This is all 
phonemic awareness, that type of thing. Okay, and then the last part of the lesson is with pictures, so let me grab that. They are black and white, so you could do it where like the kids could color it, but we don't have time for that. Like, I know my kids and we don't have time for that. So, Miss Sam and Miss Whitney colored all of our pictures and we just put them in little baggies. So this is letter E and it has several pictures in the bag that start with E. So for this lesson, it says, complete a sound sort with letter T and P. So T or P is the new letter and then T was the letter that they had already learned or I could pick, I did letter P and letter S because we hadn't learned T yet, theirs was swapped. So I got my P bag, I don't really have it here, but my P bag and my S bag and I put the little letter cards on top and then we went through the pictures and we just sorted it and that was the end of day one for my two middle groups, okay? Are you following? I know it's a lot. Okay, so on the second day, we do the part two of the lesson plan, which is the reading part, okay? So it gives you like a before reading and then like during reading and then some activities afterwards. Okay, so the before reading is just, they have to point to the letter on the front cover, so they're gonna point to it. We're gonna ask them what letter it is, point to the uppercase, point to the lowercase, just kind of reviewing that. And then they're going to trace the letters with their fingers like they did yeah, the previous day with the song that we learned. Then they can open it and these come in black and white so you could choose to copy them each week so that the kids can take them home and review it with their families but we decided to laminate them and make them like a guided reading set that we just use in the classroom and if we you know, if we want to, we could send this one home and request it to be sent back. That's what I did when I taught first grade. I would send a guided reading book home and then it would come back. But we just figured that they have enough papers going home that the parents probably don't need this exact one. So anyways, we colored it, we laminated it, and then we added it to a little ring. Okay, so once they open up the book, it has a picture on every page and it has the uppercase, the lowercase, and the photo. So, Depending on the group, we might say P, P, pig, or we might, if we're just working on the name of the letter, P, P for pig. Or if we're, we already know what letter it is, we say P, P, pig. So different versions, but they're practicing that pointing, and they're obviously using their picture clue. And then it goes through a bunch of pictures. There's a pencil, a puddle, popcorn, I think there was a pumpkin, but we lost that page, so this book doesn't have all the pages. And then, after you read the book, there is a fluency activity, and I just decided to put it at the end of the book. You could do this separate as well. And so, they're going to, once again, trace the letters. You could choose to do the song again to get them used to it, or you could choose to say, P, 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 you know? I, I think I do the song when I do this. I mean, I've only done it for two weeks, so I'm pretty sure when I go, I do the song with like, a line straight down, bump around, because that's like the skill that my kids need the most is how to make the letter. Okay, so then it has the lip here to remind you of how to make the sound with the letters and then pictures. So the fluency is p penguin, p pencil, p pig, p pumpkin. So we do it together and then they do it a couple times on their own while I'm preparing for the next part of the thing. So under the fluency practice is handwriting practice and it gives you like a bunch of options of how to practice it. It says dry erase boards, paper over sandpaper, sand trays, sensory gel bags, pencil on paper. So far the easiest one is dry erase boards and that's what we've done. So it, I'm sure you can figure it out. We all get our dry erase board and we have little erasers and pens. We literally, I model for them how to make the letter P. They do uppercase P's all over the whiteboard. We erase it and we model the lowercase and we're saying P as we write it or P, P, P. And that's it. And that's the end of the lesson. So every week it's the same structure it just changes the letter so then to organize it like i said i put it all in the bag so inside the bag i have the sound card i have all the sets of the letter p on the rings and then i also have the lesson plan another part of this um bundle that it comes with it comes with so much more but another part of the bundle that we're using is it comes with a form like this. This is for my letter T week. I have the same bag, but for letter T, which was this week, and I have all the supplies inside of it. So this is just the original, but it's a sorting and writing activity. And what I did is I gave this 
to Miss Whitney to do in her group. You know, she does the fine motor journals while well, she's doing this one of the days, fine motor, fine motor journal the other day for just those middle groups. So they just have, have these pictures, they're practicing cutting, they're gluing if it does start with T or if it does not start with T, and then they're practicing writing. So they, they have this as an activity that you could do for the handwriting practice in your group, but I don't have time for that, so I just put it in a different group. Okay, that's my middle groups. Now, for unit two, it's kind of like, I think the, the structure is called CVC, is what the focus is. So we've only done one week, and I'm gonna grab it. Okay, so this one has a lot more materials, and it's a little more flexible, but I only have three kids in this group, so that's okay. It has the same setup, like the lesson plan looks the same, but the activities are different. So the first time that they come to my table, they're gonna be doing a phonemic awareness skill, which is not gonna be focused on a letter. This time it's a rhyming activity. And it gives you like three games. It says thumbs up, tell me a rhyme, or trash it for something that you could do. Or like next week, I have this pumpkin rhyming game that that's what I'm gonna do. I already have it laminated, so. It's still rhyming practice, but it makes it a little more fun. And that's okay, or some weeks we might just do the easy lesson. Then after that, you are reviewing letters because they already know their letters, so you're just reviewing them because you're gonna do some word building. So I don't have the lesson plan from this week. This is for next week, but it has letters F and B to review. So what that would look like is I have this. It's a little wonky, I have extra, um, vowels on this side and you can do this on a whiteboard so you don't have to have this manipulated but this is what i use and so i'm gonna say find the letter f and so we'll find it f and i'll say bring it down and i'll say what sound does f make we'll review it i even have like the picture card to show them the mouth thing but they probably don't need that so then we slide it over to the side then i say find the letter b what sound does b make b very good. So then I'm gonna say, okay, now we're gonna put two letters together to make a word. I want you to find the ah, ah, and then I find a, and then I want you to find the t, t, and then they're gonna find the t and put it there. What word is that? At, let's stretch it, at, at, right? Then it gives you on here like building words. So it says, like literally it says, say sat and segment the word together. So at what letter do I need to bring down? The S, very good, I made the word sat. Then it says point to the sounds and say the sounds, so s, at, sat. Then blend the word, which we did, take away the S, and then read at again. Then you can repeat the process with mat, bat, and fat. So depending on like what level your group is at, they might need a little more support. You can say, okay, I still have at. Now I wanna make mat. You know, what letter is that? And they bring the M down. And then you could tell them to put it back. Or if your group is a little more advanced, you could say, okay, I have the word mat, but now I wanna make it bat. What letter do I need to take away? B at. Was it the first sound, the second sound, or the third sound? First sound, take it away, bring the bat over the B for the bat, there we go. So, little word building thing. And then the last thing we do with that group on the first day is a sight word. So this week it was the, but next week it's gonna be C. And the thing has a form like this, map it out, and you follow the high frequency word routine and it has the directions on there. And that's it, so that's day one. It's kind of a lot, it's way more advanced, that's why only my three kids that are there. I would say last year I probably had one kid that would have been able to handle this towards the end of the year. This is the first year that I've had kids that are like ready for this already. Okay, so then the second time that they come to my table, it's a book again, just like the other group. And there's like some questions that we ask at the end. So the book is they are going to be reading it and it goes with the skills we learned on. So we already learned the word the, and then we have at that we just practiced. So they're gonna go the, bats right and it's super simple decodable reader see the bat see the mat and so we might like color in the word c afterwards because that was our sight word we learned i did make these on paper so that this group can take them home because i feel like it's more value than just the letter book and like the last sentence gets pretty tricky with all the words See the fat bat on the mat. And so it's just a word family, but in a book. Love it. Okay, then it even gives you questions that you can ask. So who was in the story? What did the bats do? 
what would you do if you saw a bat on a mat? Okay, so if you get through all that, that's enough. You don't have to keep going. But if you wanted some more things, they have some extra things. There's a blending practice and an encoding practice. So for the blending practice, they use whiteboards and you're gonna write one word at a time. So I would write, you know, bat, and then we would blend it. B at bat, okay? Um, for the encoding, they're gonna be tapping it and mapping it themselves, which is just the opposite. Like, I'm writing it the first time, the second time, basically, they're writing it. So I'll say, okay, let's write the word bat. B at. There's three sounds, we tap three sounds. Now let's go ahead and stretch it. And maybe we'll use this same paper, maybe we just use the whiteboard, not a big deal. Then they also have a guided writing activity. So what I'm gonna do is they are gonna do a guided writing activity with Miss Whitney because that's like her fine motor thing. And they have a different activity where it has like sentences and they can break the sentence apart, put it together, things like that, and then write it. But we're gonna just do like a prompt about pumpkins or anything like that. So it's still guided writing, but it's not, it might not be this exact activity. Well, let me show you, my camera's like flashing at me. Great. I'm gonna show you how I organize this, hopefully, and some of the other resources while I'm All right, shooting. so over here, I have these new reading phones that we're using. I'm just keeping them up here. In the top drawer, I'm gonna keep my second level lesson plan in here. I'll probably get a folder for it to keep them all together. There's my lesson plan from, from this week. They also have some reading strategy cards in here that I can give the kids when we start reading some of the trickier books or if they need reminders for how to blend. And then I put under it those map it out so there's enough for every kid to have one. So it's kind of like my higher level drawer. Then this drawer, I put all those cards for the cut, the sorting. I also put the motions chart in here. So this is all the letters for the motions to help us, like if we need to review a certain sound. And then I cut them out into individuals. So obviously it was letter T, so we learned to tap our foot when we say T, T, T. And that comes with the resource too. Then the bottom two drawers, excuse my bag down here. The bottom two drawers right now, I just have extra, uh oh, extra empty bags in here. But my plan is to use like A to M, I think is the middle of the alphabet, maybe L, I don't know. And then the end of the alphabet, because the bags are going to be pretty full. And it'll just sort through all the letter books once I get them all made as we go. Then over here, I still have like my personal binders that I need. I have some other resources, stickers. This is where I'm keeping those magnetic boards. I have a million whiteboards, but over here in the top drawer, I'm keeping, these are just letter cards. Oop. I'm keeping the erasers that we got and then some dry erase markers that they can put away on their own. This is our lamination one. That's just easy access for us. And then down here, I'm keeping my data folders. And then I have an entire empty bin that I don't know what I'm gonna put in there yet, but I'll figure something out. And then as usual, up here, I have my small group activities. So in here, I have my brand new lesson plan sheet that I'm doing. So it differentiates it. So it just has our math groups, who's in the group and what they're doing next week. And then reading groups on Monday, we do two rotations, Tuesday, two rotations, Wednesday, and Thursday, and I also made this for Miss Sam and Miss Whitney. Okay, so that's it for Tuesday Talk. I'm on my phone now because my camera did die, but I'm actually proud because I got that all taken care of before the kids come in, and then I won't have to stay after school today. I know that was kind of a lot. I'm going to link it down below so it'll help you, and you can really see. I didn't want to just fly through the screen of what the product has. It's not even my product, but I'm promoting it. I think it's amazing, and I hope it helps you guys too. As usual, if you like this video, don't forget that thumbs up that subscribe button and that notification bell. And don't forget to put comments down below of more things that you wanna hear about in our classroom or even my thoughts on things. See you guys soon, bye.